Howdy. Welcome to Texas Front Porch. I'm your host, Tex. Y'all saddle up with me and my co-host. We're about to sink a spur and go on a ride that takes us down some rocky and windy trails. We're going to do our level best to cipher out everything we can about all sorts of critters. Bigfoot, dogman, and pretty much anything that walks, creeps, crawls, or even takes to flight. Rabbit holes we're fixing to be poking our heads down is going to take a look-see into everything from abductions to xenophobes. We may not always agree, and that's alright. That, my friends, is how we learn. We will be conversating with a whole lot of interesting folks here on the old porch, and y'all are welcome to chime in. Just keep a civil tongue, and it will go as smooth as a fine whiskey. Y'all can find us over yonder on the Facebook, TikTok, Reddit, Rumble, or you can email us at paracrypticencounters at gmail.com. Or if you're feeling real neighborly, shoot us a text, 972-559-0988. Enjoy the show, folks. Good Monday, everybody, as you can see. See, I am sitting here, and, okay, I'm going to explain these glasses. <laughs> um. Okay. When you got subscription glasses and these are just readers, but when you got issued subscription glass prescription glasses in the military, they were thick black frames like this, made anybody look like they need to be wearing a pocket protector. And we call them birth control glasses because there wasn't no way in hell you were gonna pick up a date. And I've been having to fight Brandy off with a stick here lately. <laughs> so th this is this is a preventive measure to you know keep her keep her keep her at bay. So that, that's, <laughs> that's what this is all about. Well, Has nothing to do with me losing my other glasses or breaking them or anything else, and me having these only ones in the house. That has nothing to do with it. It's totally on purpose, and that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. So, <laughs> well, you know, it all started on our show the other night, and you came on as Tex Alicious. Um, I think you brought it upon yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that's what, uh, yeah, that was a uh. A moment of insanity, I guess. I'm, I'll claim that. Yeah, why not? <laughs> ah, well, you never know what you're going to get. So there you go. <laughs> pops, pops is uh, pops. Gary Spike Senior is asking me how many pair are you going to lose? You know, that's why I go buy them in bulk because. <laughs> I either lose them or break them at work, one or two. So, <laughs> now we got now, folks. Don't 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 let him tell you any different. Ro Robbie paid me to be on this show tonight. He uh. I felt so damn sorry for him, you know, because that, you know, him and D, they've got their little bitty thing they've got going over there and they, and they needed some help. And, you know, so I thought, well, I'll throw him a bone and, you know, have old Robbie on and, and, uh, so I, I wouldn't take any money. He tried to pay me, but I wouldn't take any money. I, you know, I felt sorry for the old feller and, and, uh, you know, he, he's, uh, well, you know, he, he's he's a nice guy, I guess. Don't tell him I said that. Oh, you got, you got me crying already. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> but we are gonna we are gonna have the old long debate that's, that people have been um talking about around this campfire for years, as long as I've been on here. Who would win, Dogman or Bigfoot in a fight? We're going to break it down tonight. 
But don't think that that's the only thing we're going to talk about. <laughs> no. <laughs> Absolutely because not. Because that ain't going to happen. You know, we got all <laughs> kinds of rabbit holes we'll fall into. And we got to talk about the Dogman Conference. But anyway, let's get... Brandy, uh, I, I didn't mean to ignore you, darling. How are you? I'm, I'm hot, but I'm good. I'm good. Okay, <laughs> well, why don't you try telling all the guys something that they don't know already? You lead with your hot. That's kind of that's kind of self-absorbed. I'm saying it's kind of cocky. I mean, it may be true, but you ain't got to flaunt it. Jax, it's 112 outside. That's what I'm talking about. It's 112, okay? That's it. <laughs> all right, all right. I'll, I'll let that one slide, I guess. <laughs> Let's get old Robbie up here before somebody yells at me for not being on topic. <laughs> He's already laughing. He is already laughing. See? <laughs> oh, y'all ain't seen it. Y'all ain't seen nothing yet. Y'all are gonna hang out with me on Friday night after after the dinner in, in my old stomping grounds. I would not be surprised if the if I have not worn a trail in them sidewalks down there because I used to that was my old haunt down there, um, where we're going. And it's it's called the uh the historic stockyards, and that's where the 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 Stockyard stockyards were back in the 1800s, you know, when Fort Worth was just getting kicked off, and it's where it got its name, where the West begins, and um, they would all meet up there and with their cattle, and you know, it's where the you know sale barns were and all that kind of stuff, and then <clears throat> they take them off up the uh, the Chisholm Trail and all that kind of stuff. So it, it's a really cool area. Um, a lot of the buildings are, are the same as they were back in the 1800s, you know, um, it's, it's going to be a, uh, it's going to be a good time. It's going to be a good time, but I can't promise yeah, we won't get into a lot of trouble. Pictures. I'll get lots and lots of pictures. And of course we've got the rodeo arena that's right there, basically across the street from where we're going to be. And then right down the road, we've got the famous cattleman's restaurant. And then a little bit further down the road, we do actually have the original and uh, Billy Bob's. So, and a lot of bars within walking distance. They're all up and down that that uh, that that street right there. So, I, I am, walking uh, distance is going to be a good th good thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're we're definitely gonna have to have uh, some designated drivers, I believe. So I can carry I can carry five in my truck. So I suggest we as many of us ride together as we can. Uh, Griff says going to the stockyards. Yes, sir. We're going to the stockyards. Um, we're gonna start out at the White Elephant Saloon. Because it's too damn hot to go to the beer garden. Now, the beer garden sits right next door to the saloon. And it is an open air place. And it's two stories. But, uh, yeah, we, we are going to, we're going to start out at the White Elephant Saloon. Now, a little, a little personal history with the White Elephant Saloon. This is where, and guys, I want to give a big shout out to my wife. Because she is probably the most forgiving person I've ever met in my life. One, she's been married to me 31 years. I, I, she, she deserves the Medal of Honor or something like that. Um, I, I know she's got a couple of Purple Hearts anyway. But uh, that the White Elephant Saloon is where we met. So, and, and she's not going to make this trip. Um, she's, I, I think this is kind of my anniversary present um, <laughs> but uh, it, it's going to uh, it's going to be a good time I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to show, her, show everybody a good time we'll go down and we'll probably hit Filthy McNasty's and the Longhorn and um, as the song says if we get lost we'll end up in PR's 
So unfortunately, one of the most iconic places down there burned down just a couple of weeks ago called Cad or called Cadillacs, um, which is one of the places I was going to do. There, there are several tattoo shops, so we could all get matching tattoos. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. You just I say when. <laughs> say again, Robin. I said I got some free space. There you go. There you go. Well, see, everybody that goes, what, what I haven't put out there is anybody that goes with me has got to get the the front porch logo tattooed on their ass. So <laughs> I ain't got that much free space. <laughs> <laughs> but see, Doc and I still have to actually get, he, Doc's got to get this because I've already got this and I've got to get Dark Angel Medical somewhere. So well, there still you tattooed. go. To be done. Oh, yeah, it, you it know, was... and, and, and Grish says there's an axe throwing place in Fort Worth. Yes, there is. It is unbelievable. And, and I'm sorry, folks. I'm gonna I'm gonna apologize right now. We have not gotten on topic yet, but that gummit, I like to talk, I like to shoot shit. That's what we're doing. There is an axe throwing place there in Fort Worth. I can't believe how expensive it is to walk in there and throw axes at a at a at a tree. Or a board. It's unbelievable. That's stuff I used to do for free out on the ranch. I'm not going to pay to go do that. Yep. If I didn't have a buddy that owned one right down the road from my house, I probably would never go because it's so damn expensive. Yeah, we, we, used to th we used to throw the, uh, the, uh, the, the long handle double headed axes. Yeah, that's what that's what we chunked. But uh, yeah, we we gonna we gonna have a good time. Hey, Krista's in here. Yep. Yeah, she's getting uh, she's getting her designated driver all settled up there with Gary Senior. <laughs> so is this is this like a uh, is this like a brand uh, a Krista one and Krista two situation here, or what do we got going? No crickets, huh? Crickets, no, no, nothing, huh? I don't know. She's y'all are gonna... really keeping your mouth shut on that. Okay, all right. <laughs> I hope he ain't asking me because I have no clue what you're talking about. <laughs> well, we got Krista one in the chat, and we got Krista two sitting who wrote beside me. Ah, oh, gotcha. Mm, I am, yeah. Well, that's no, usually, the way it go usually the way it goes <laughs> when they both – when because Brandy had to start putting uh, blondes and booze Brandy because they when they come on in our, in our show, you never know which one of them to say hey to. So you just say, hey, Brandy and Krista. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's Brandy. Or, oh, it's Krista. So she finally made her own and just said blondes and booze Brandy. So you at least knew yeah. who you were saying hey to. Yeah, exactly. Mine's got my name in it, so at least you know Red who you're talking to. Red Pill pre Preachers is asking, y'all need a designated drinker? Yeah, we need more of them. Y'all come on. <laughs> hey, I, you know what? And I, I'm serious, folks. If if y'all want to, if y'all want to meet us down there, I got no issues at all. We'll 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 invade the stockyards. Absolutely. So, yeah. Y'all come hang out and say hey. Y'all better show up. I bought a new pair of boots for the shindig, so. And at some point. Um, I might need to wear get... a dress. What? I said I might even wear a dress. Oh, hell, I'm going to pay to see that. Um... <laughs> okay. Randy's taking this serious. <laughs> you know, when we went to uh, Gatlinburg and, and Robbie was there and he had to make that walk from the convention center, you know, to the vehicle. And it was so hot. And he had on that hat and he had on jeans. And cowboy uh, boots. And cowboy boots. I'm going to love to see this. Because he was complaining on it being hot then. 
you know, uh, that was still five gonna... o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> it was hot. <laughs> well, folks, I will tell you this. <laughs> I work nights at the present time, which is about to change, by the way. But it's not going to change anything on the show. So don't worry. Uh, I'm going to take the hit for y'all and stay up late and do the shows. Um, oh. But I get off work about 4, 35 o'clock in the morning. And it's still running 90 degrees when I get off work. So, yeah, it is not going to be a... Uh, we we may we may get a little woodsy just walking around North. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll have to have a bag and put some deodorant in it. <laughs> I don't think I think they suspended. If I I heard this, I don't know if they still. I would imagine they still have because the heat hadn't let up. They suspended the cattle drive because they uh, normally they do a cattle drive down. Um, down the street there in front of the white elephant um, twice a day for all the foreigners when they come down like y'all. So <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we, we, we're going to have a good time. We, we are going to have a good time. Yeah, don't forget. I think there are tickets still available. Um, so make sure you get your tickets and get them quick. Yep. I think yep. everybody decided to get their ticket at the last minute. So, you know, and the thing about it is we, we're going to, it, it is confirmed that everybody on our team, except for Rob is going to be there. So you're going to have Krista, Brandy, Danielle Diva is going to be there. She is flying in from Canada, folks, and she's going to be there. And uh, Jason's going to, Randy's going to be there. Bob's going to be there. Donnie Cho is flying down. He's going to be there. And mm -hmm. uh, so, and rumor has it that I'll be there too. So, you know, hey, <laughs> I hope I didn't miss anybody. No, you got everybody. Well, Randy. Randy said he's not going to be able to make it on Saturday, but he'll be there on Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I get it. Um, it's his mother's 81st birthday mm -hmm. Saturday. So yeah, I get that. Um, it, it, it's like I said, it's going to be a good time. I mean, a lot of good people down there, and I can't wait to meet everybody that's coming. Looking forward to it. Yeah, and we're also going to have Robbie. Yeah, well, instead of a Rob, we got a Robbie. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, Robbie, there is a good hat store right down the road, too, from where we're going to be going. So there's a couple of Western Wear stores down there that are pretty good. So, um, really good, really good uh, food. I'll, place I want to take you is uh, it's it's I can't remember. Yeah, it's just right down the road from uh, right. And when I say right down the road, I'm all this. When I say walking. It's, it's walking distance, folks. And um, there's a restaurant down there. You got Cattleman's down there, which is a which is a famous steakhouse down yonder. Um. But, uh, I mean, we're, obviously we're coming back from a dinner, a lot of us. So, but if you're not going to the dinner and you want to meet us down there, um, you want to go grab back to eat, go over to Risky's Barbecue. Okay. Um, right there in the stockyards and get you a big helping of uh, fried calf, chicken fried calf fries. You won't regret it. Regret it. They got good barbecue too. So, Robbie, what y'all got going on over in y'all's camp? Oh, uh, let's see. We just had on last Wednesday, I believe, we had Eli Watson from Small Town Monsters on. That was a 
pretty good show. Um, then Saturday, uh, what day is it? Today's Monday, so Saturday was our last show. We had Naomi on there, um, which is always a good time when Naomi's on there. I think I saw her in chat earlier. Yeah, uh, she's here. And uh, we had uh, Scott Carpenter on. Um, couple shows guys they start running together when you do two week and you work those 12 hour shifts so i can't remember the i know naoma was saturday and but i don't remember the order of the last two but i know we had scott on one time and eli on another time uh so we, we've had some had some pretty interesting stuff and uh then we were on with brandy and krista what friday night i believe me and da <laughs> were and right we, we kind of just had a part two to, to that on our show saturday night of uh, about the Gugway and uh, some Dog Man, yeah. East of Bray Road, things like that. LBL. Okay. It seems like it seems like Dog Man stuff is really kind of the hot button topic right now. Seems like that's it the, is. That's that's become really popular here lately. It seems like. Yeah, it's 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 gaining. It, it's growing legs. No pun intended, but. <laughs> Um, you know, we, we've, like I said, we've had this debate in, in this circle. And when I say circle, the whole Bigfoot dog man community, mm -hmm. um, for years now, um, if there was a fight, which I, I've heard reports that people have seen them. Um, and if you've got two apex predators, eventually they're going to butt heads enough to where one of them gets a little waspy and, you know, the bluff don't work and you know they throw down i personally would be surprised if any of them actually well i'm sure a few of them have but i doubt very many of them go to the death um I mean, that's just, that's just how nature works. You know, you got two big apex predators. They don't, you know, they don't want to, once somebody gets their butt kicked, he can pretty much walks away. Uh, it depends how waspy these critters are in that, as far as that uh, situation would go. But I think to, uh, what I was thinking about is, to compare these things, I think we ought to take them down to at least the same height, which is not, I don't think, outlandish. I think we could go eight feet for each of them. Yeah, yeah. I, um, cause I, I think, you know, an average height for most, not all, but most dogman sightings are, you know, around the eight, eight and a half foot mark. So I think eight, and there's plenty of eight foot, big foot sightings. So I think that's a good, good starting point. So who wants to be Team Bigfoot and who wants to be Team Dogman? This is a hard don't, one for don't me even because, ask me because I, you know, I, I sit there and I think about this all the time. It's like we got asked that question about who would we, who would we rather be confronted by, Bigfoot or Dogman? And I, I and I, and I said a dog man because I, I, I thought, well, it'd probably be faster and get it over with quicker. But somebody brought up the point that, well, when Bigfoot got a hold of me, it'd just rip my head off and it'd be over quick. <laughs> so, you know, for me, it's kind of like, I, I don't even know where to begin with that. Since werewolves were always my first love as far as monster movies go, I'll argue for Team Dogman if that, okay. that'll make it easier. Okay. All right. I think I've seen enough uh be werewolf movies and mainstream <laughs> werewolf movies and read enough books. I think, I think I can, I can tow that line. Well, I'll, 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 um, I was thinking about it the other day and I'm like, you know, this is kind of the whole Godzilla versus King Kong thing too, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. But you really can't one. say you really can't say that well because the argument in that in that movie was, you know, Godzilla's got the brute strength and everything, but King Kong's a thinking animal. 
But you can't really say that here because supposedly these dog men are very, very intelligent also. Mm -hmm. So you, they're both thinking animals. They both basically have the same weapons at their disposal. They both have the claws. They both have the teeth, you know, um, depending on which side of the Bigfoot you take. Now, if you take um, the Harry Henderson's type thing, well, you know, they got, they don't eat nothing but veggies and, and they love animals and all this kind of stuff. I don't yeah. think that's the case. But uh, <laughs> yeah, if you're talking Gugway, yeah, that's, that's a different story. But we don't even know what the hell a Gugway is. No, but I mean, I, I, well, honestly, honestly, if we're if we're completely honest here, we don't know what any of either them one is. of these creatures are. Correct. Correct. Okay. Um. Now, are we going to go, and another thing you have to think is, are we going to talk about them just as physical, fasting blood creatures, or are we going to throw into the woo aspect of it? Well, Randy will tell you, I, I'm more of the flesh and blood type <clears throat> argument, because I just... And I, this here again, this is my opinion. I don't discredit or discount or say that anything's impossible. I just, I got my beliefs and I believe flesh and blood because everything I've seen, it shows flesh and blood. Now, I've never had a dogman encounter, so I can't say that a dogman is not something spiritual or supernatural. But the, the Bigfoot that I've seen and all the stuff that I've seen that go along with it, showed me flesh and blood so I, I i'm the flesh and blood camp i can't i don't have a whole lot of woo experience to, to argue on that <laughs> disclaimer <laughs> well i'm in, i'm in the same boat okay i'm i'm more of the flesh and blood camp than i am the woo camp but i don't I'm like you, I'm not going to discount anything happening because just because we haven't had it happen to us doesn't mean it hasn't happened. Right. You know. but, and here's the thing, though. If you're going to throw the woo or, or, or say that, so you're going to say that this is an actual werewolf, then we really don't have a debate because an actual werewolf that you, like what we've been shown in Hollywood, a real flesh and blood Bigfoot is not going to stand a chance against something like that. It's pretty much immortal. You can't kill it with anything but silver. It can regenerate. It's got superhuman strength. A real, if Bigfoot's flesh and blood, it's not going to stand a chance against a real werewolf. So I think we got to go either they're both supernatural power things, which I think that would be hard for us to argue because at that point, you're, it's like Superman versus Thor. Who do you really want to win? You know, Superman's weak to magic, but Thor's this, you know, but if they're two flesh and blood creatures, it's like a lion and a tiger fighting. Right. So that, honestly, that. honestly, and I'm not going to, I'm not trying to give away the result here because we don't know the result, what we're going to, my personal opinion, I think it's a freaking coin toss. It's like, a, it's like playing football. Any given Sunday, any team can win or lose. Yeah. You know, it just depends who screws up first, honestly. Um, but I do think that you have to give, I think you have to give the strength to Bigfoot. Um, I do think you have to give the the thinking aspect to Bigfoot. Okay, um, I, I, I get that dog men are, are are very intelligent, or are we we believe they are. Um, But I think that Bigfoot takes it a step further. So I'm going to give the thinking advantage to Bigfoot and the strength advantage to Bigfoot. I'm giving the agility and the quickness and the viciousness to Dogman. Um, because if what I see playing out in my head is the dog man getting on the Bigfoot's back and chewing on the throat. That's what I see happening, given the opportunity. 
Now that's um, – I think they can both take a punch. I don't think a Bigfoot's going to swat – Swat a, uh, uh, now, folks, you got to remember we're talking about the same size critters here. You get, of course, Bigfoot. I think is going to weigh more than a dog man, of course. But um, I think if the dog man ever got on the Bigfoot's back and got a good solid, you know, bite, I think it'd eh, pretty much be all over. Because you've got to remember, if we're talking about these creatures that are be, that they are flesh and blood, which I think they are, they have an off switch. Okay. <laughs> and it's just like ours. It's right at the base of the skull. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, but that's, I think kind of what I was, that's what I was thinking about. The dogmen, though, I mean, it's... It, it's not necessarily the bite. I mean, you've got to think about the claws there. One good swipe across, you know, the jugular area, and I believe that the fight would be over. Right, because I think Bigfoot has, I mean, they may have the, the long fingernails, but they're, I think they're going to be not near what the claws that, you know, we talk about the, the dogman have it. Mm-hmm. So, but I will say this. I think if the Bigfoot ever got a halt of the dog man, it would pretty much be game over. I think that uh, personally, I think that Bigfoot would, or, you know, the, the Sasquatch would just literally rip limbs off and it'd be over. It would just be like, okay, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm done playing, you know, like the stretch Armstrong, except right. the dog man won't stretch. And and I agree, hundred percent because we've we've all heard multiple multiple accounts of how strong most of these Bigfoot creatures are. Uh, right. You know, you the other night on our show, Tex, you you talked about that scaling up the math from like what a gorilla is. So so we all know what strength factor they got. But what you've really never heard is you've never really heard any. And not saying that they're not, but you just I don't remember ever hearing any kind of. Things like a dog man turned the car over or, it, you know, it uprooted a tree. But here's the other thing with that. We don't know those, those trees that we see in the in the forest. We don't know that that was a Bigfoot or a dog man. I mean, we assume Bigfoot because that's that's what we've always, you know. But right. all these dog man sightings, on, who, who's to say that they're not strong enough to do that? We don't know. So that's just that like that X factor that you don't really know. We assume that if a Bigfoot got a hold of a dog man, that it would – but when you think about that, we're a lot bigger than a bobcat. If we get a hold of a bobcat, what's going to happen? Exactly. It ain't, ain't going to go too good for us. Right. So, right. That's just that's just that little food for thought. It more than likely it's what we said. You know, Bigfoot is way stronger than a dog man, and it would be game over. But well, the and, factor of not knowing for sure. I mean, that may be like trying to grab a hold of a buzz saw. Uh, well, and, and, and here's a, and here's another way, it, and it just hit me. Another way to look at that, and I didn't think about it until you said the made the bobcat comparison. Look at a, a human versus a, a police dog. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, yeah. a human can outweigh a police dog by 100 pounds. Easy. I've, but, I've uh, caught Belgian Malinois that yeah. 60, 70 pounds that threw my big 260-pound butt on the ground like I wasn't nothing. Right. So, I mean, that, that throws in a whole new aspect of it. Okay. So it's like you said, it's like getting a hold of butt. So. Right. But something that we're not thinking about, though, we well, it, it's something that we don't know. What is the pain threshold that a Sasquatch would have? Now, when a dog bites our arm, we're going to start screaming and trying to get this dog off us to get it away from us. Now, that may just make a Sasquatch mad that it got bit, and then he would just grab a hold of it and start tearing it apart. And you know, it, it just uh, you know, for me, that would seem like a pain, pain threshold type of deal. But also the agility that a, a dogman would have would be it seemed to be quicker, easier to move around. You know, um, that it could like circle uh, a, a Sasquatch quicker probably would get multiple bites in before 
you know, a Sasquatch would have time to, to grab it. Well, and, but thinking about what, what Tex just said, Brandy, and if, if dogmen operate like canines, and from a former canine handler, when a, when a dog gets a hold of your arm and it starts digging them feet in and just pushing mm-hmm. them, there's not a lot. There's not a lot of. I, now there again, we're not Sasquatch, so we're not. We don't have that superhuman strength, but also mm-hmm. we're not going against a dog man either when we're going against it. So it's actually right. a pretty good comparison when you think about it. Uh, it is the human getting bit. So I mean, if you size it up pound for pound, we're stronger than dogs. But when they get a hold of you, and they use their entire body to pull on that one ful- fulcrum point and get you off balance the same thing could happen because it doesn't really matter how strong or how big you are if they get a hold of you and they pull you off balance and you hit the ground it could be game over same thing could happen there too dog man gets a hold of it drops down on all fours and starts pulling and gets a big foot down before the big foot really knows what's going on or knows or can can and then lets go real quick uses that quickness and that agility and yep yeah. Well, you there, know, there's just a lot of unknowns that you do, you can't. It's hard to answer those questions. You can speculate, but yeah. yeah. Well, and I and I wrote a short short story that involved a fight between a dogman and um, a horse. And now, given this wasn't no what you would call a, a normal everyday horse, this was I patterned the horse after a horse that I had. And she was half quarter horse and half Belgian. <laughs> okay. Mm, so she, she had feet like a freaking mule. And she was, well, I think she was 18 and a half hands tall. Which if you don't know, folks, that's big for a horse. <laughs> okay. Um, and uh, it wasn't no easy chore for the dog man, you know, the horse put up a, a, a really good fight, but when it comes down to it, the horse doesn't have the agility. It's got the strength over the dog man, but it doesn't have the agility and it doesn't have the tools that the dog man has. They almost said half Belgian, half quarter horse. Somebody got in the wrong bed that night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Great horse though, and I saw. I'll, I'll okay. I'll, I'll give you an example. This horse, um, <laughs> we tied her to a. We had a, a fifty-five Chevrolet pickup that we were. Uh, my brother-in-law was refurbishing, and it was sitting on all four flats at the time, and he was working on the engine. He tied it to the bed of this tr- of this truck, right, and then he had to go back in the house and get something. When he came back out of the house, the damn horse had drugged this damn pickup sideways all the way up to the house, which is about 60 yards. <laughs> Just walked off with it. So, you know, they're, they're, it's like I said, the, the strength advantage definitely goes to Bigfoot, but I think you have to give the agility, and a lot of times agility will overcome strength. My, uh, my Mal, she was... 55 pounds at her heaviest. And I had one of those uh, uh, tugs that are made out of the burlap. Mm -hmm. And my partner was probably 260 pounds at the time when, uh, when I had her and I, I don't have it anymore. I wish I had the video so I could send to you put up. He's sitting in one in the police department and sitting in one of those metal folding chairs. And we took the, uh, the loop on the tug and looped it underneath one of the legs and my partner's sitting on the chair and Quinna has got a hold of that tug and she's doing that backwards push like and she was pulling him across the floor. Yep. That's 260 something pounds of static weight that a 55 pound dog is pulling with her teeth. And and I mean that that's you it's hard to measure strength like that. It is. And, you know, and the thing about it is, if you think about something else, what, what, um, those mountain dogs that are so dead gum strong, they can pull, 
what a thousand pounds or something like that. You're talking about the Malamutes, the Alaskan Malamutes. Yeah, that, maybe those are those are some strong dogs. I think that's no, probably it's not a Malamute. It, it's it's something they are known for their strength, and it's okay. something something mountain dog, and I can't remember what it is that gun. But um, they they can they can pull about a thousand pounds static weight. Well, that gum, you know, and these dogs, you know, hundred pounds maybe. Bernese, thank you, Bernese, Naomi, you, you're awesome. Uh, Miss uh, Mel, if we can't figure it out, she'll figure it out. <laughs> I'll tell you this much: um, uh, Pixie said Pixie brought up Saint Bernard. I yeah. had a Saint Bernard. And he weighed, uh, he weighed 215 pounds. And when he stood up on his hind legs, because we'd go out and wrap, my dad would plow a field, and we'd go out and wrestle in the field after it was freshly plowed. And when he would rear up and put his paws on my shoulders, he was a good head or two taller than me, you know. And he weighed pretty much the same as I did at that point. And yeah, you wasn't going to, I, I wouldn't want him mad at me. Yeah. Well, let, let's, let's go back to the horse thing. Cause I was thinking about that. You were, you were talking about that, that a horse basically wouldn't stand a chance or a slim chance at the, at best. I think it's a slim chance. It depends on what kind of kick he got in. Right. But could a horse outrun him? Given the opportunity, I think so. I think you think so. a horse could be faster. I, I think it could. Well, at a short, okay. Wolves, what wolves has have a? It's the whole cat versus canine thing. Cats are quick uh -huh. at a short distance. Dogs, they are known for distance runners. They will run. That's why they run down prey. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they don't have to, as far as speed go, outrun something, but they can run it into the ground. You know, um, so I don't know if. Well, I mean, I've heard reports of these. Distance. Yeah, but I've heard I've he I've also heard stories of the uh, the dog man, you know, running upwards to you know fifty miles an hour. Now you're looking at almost cheetah speed at that point, point. Um, and a dog being a canine being built the way they are, they're they're made for distance, and they could sustain that for a while. So, I gotta say no. Uh, I don't think uh, um, right out of the gate possibly, but I think eventually the uh, the dog man is gonna run in, run, run the run the horse run down. down. Yeah. And tell you, I guess you got a lot of that kind of depends on what kind of horse it is too. Mm hmm. Yep. And because a big a big draft horse is probably not going to outpace a dog man as long no. as say like a a quarter horse or a Tennessee Walker right. or something like that. That's more of a athletically built horse. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. That that is that is true. That is true. Now. I think I think the Bigfoot where it comes to strategy has the advantage. Because like I said, I think they're more they're they're both thinking animals, but I think Bigfoot takes it to another level. Um it, it's very possible that the whole I, I go right back to if the Bigfoot ever got a hold of it. You know. 
but then you go, it, it's real. I, I keep going. It's a coin toss. Yeah. That, I, I mean, know? my honest opinion, it's like that, uh, you know, like the old West, uh, when you get two of the fastest, whoever, yeah. whoever draws first, or you hear it in football all the time, whoever, you know, you whichever team, saying? yeah, whichever team scores first is probably going to win the, you know, so, and I, I just keep going back to and thinking about you try to pick up a cat that doesn't want to be picked up. What happens? Right. You let that cat go pretty dang quick. Yeah. And if you go to pet a dog, little, even a little small feist that don't want to be pet or petted, what happens? I mean, you get your hand back real quick because of how quick that, that head comes around with them teeth. And I just – I, I just see, like you said, if the Bigfoot gets a hold of him right the first time and game over. But if the Bigfoot is not careful, it's not going to end well for him. He may come back with four fingers instead of five. Yeah. And, see, and that's another thing. We have no idea what the um, the bite is on these dog men. Right. You know, I mean, are they are they like a wolf or or they? I mean, could they be more like a hyena? You know, a hyena, pound for pound, they latch onto something. I mean, they got bone bone crushing strength in their jaws. You know, and you t I see people throwing out pit bull. Well, a pit bull is like we were talking about with the German shepherds and stuff. Once they latch down, they don't let go. That could possibly be a that could possibly be detrimental because if they don't let go, that gives the Bigfoot time to get a hold of them. And uh, well, that's you know, pit, like, people like to say pit bull, but pit bulls don't. I've got a pit bull. He doesn't. It, 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 they're not designed, or they weren't designed to have crushing power they were designed to have holding power right it, it, so that's where all their strength comes in is trying to get get them off of what because i've tried to get stuff away from bucky and it's like you know i need a two-ton car jack to get his mouth open but cap right. my german shepherd i can open his mouth with one hand right it, it's all it's all about what they're bred to do and i, I just pulled it up uh a timber wolf the highest measured uh, bite pressure for a timber wolf has been 400 PSI. So if you scale that up to a dog man, you, you know, an eight foot, what what we say, six, 700 pound, maybe, maybe a thousand pound. You probably looking at conservatively, conservatively, I'd say <laughs> thousand pounds, maybe. Yeah. That's a lot of bite pressure. Okay, yep. so what if, what if, okay, say uh, a dog man bit a Sasquatch on the arm, had it by the arm. Do you think with, with the amount of strength that a Sasquatch has, could it reach down on the muzzle and just squeeze it to the point that it's got to let go or it's going to get crushed? I think it's entirely possible, but there's a, so many X factors that is... Is the is it going to be a static bite where the dog man just bites and sits still, or is it going to be a bite like when like well, all right. dogs do when they bite, bite, it, grab, shake, shake yeah. all over the place? So, well, not only that, going back to what you were saying, the pain threshold. What's going to happen yeah. when the dog man bites the Bigfoot's arm? How's he going to react? You know, um, right. I but think you, but first... you know, you were saying you were saying they're thinkers, though. Right, but we are too. And what's the first thing that happens when we get bit? We try to draw back and get away from whatever's got a hold of us. Right. And I think you're going to see the same reaction initially there. Now, I'm not right. saying the Bigfoot might not shake him off or the dog let the dog man let go. 
and you've pissed the Bigfoot off. <laughs> right. And then right. Katie, and then Katie bar the door. You know, and you can't really give the all fours advantage to the to the dog man because Bigfoot move arguably better on all fours than they do on, you know. I'm you know I, I think I think if we wanted to see the best out the best if I I wish I knew somebody that could do this. That you, you see these these uh these simulated animal fights that they do. The CGI animated right. animal face offs. The show, yeah, I just love that show. If you could put if you could put a timber wolf against a gorilla, I think we would see pretty much the outcome of what we're talking about. Possibly. But you know what, Tex? We're almost at fifty two minutes right now. So we're gonna have to take our five minute break. And uh we're gonna have to think about this. Why don't you do the uh, show rundown? Why don't you do the show rundown real quick, Brandy, and then we'll take a break. Absolutely, of course. It's today. It's Monday. You have Texas Prep Porch. That's always on at eight PM Central on Tuesday at seven PM Central. It's Bob Van Buren with Van Buren Variety at eight PM. It is Bigfoot Michigan Rob with Beyond BMR on Wednesdays at eight PM Central. It's Daniel Diva with the Diva Dimension. Thursdays at 12 p.m. Central, <clears throat> it is Bigfoot Michigan Rob. That's with brunch with Bigfoot Michigan Rob and his co-host Krista. Thursday evenings, it's Blondes and Booze at 8 p.m. And on Fridays, it's Blondes, Booze, and the Woo again at 8 p.m. Central Time. On Saturdays, Tex and Danielle Diva will drop their newest episodes of Infamous Minds at about 2 p.m. Central. Sounds great. And we will see y'all in five minutes. Old man's got to go pee. Four minutes to go, folks. Four minutes. Three minutes, we're almost there.
Two minute warning guys, two minute warning. One minute, one minute. And we are back. If yes. we can get Brandy off her phone long enough, we'll start the show again. I'm, out, I'm writing notes. I'm writing notes. Because I had a big thought that for that five minutes, you know. Oh, I, well, I was by all means. Uh, folks, if you're just tuning in, we're talking about, we're having the old debate on um, Dogman versus Bigfoot in a fight to the death. Um, who's going to win? And we don't have a winner yet. So, no. Randy, what is this? You know, I, was thinking, I I used to watch, uh, I used to be into the ultimate fighting challenge. I used to love watching the fights in between the different types of fighters in, in their fighting styles and things like that. You know, a Sasquatch reminds me more of a, a grappler a grappler type type of fighter where they're constantly thinking they're 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 not good at distance fighting should i say standing away but once they have you in close it's 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 they've got you and they're constantly thinking about how they're going to take you out now i believe that a dogman is more on the boxer side of things because they're going to use their upper body to to you know you know, get their biggest blows in, you know what I mean? To, to cause the most devastation with the top of their body. So it would all depend on how they met up, how, how the fight began, if they were coming on face to face or if one snuck up on the other. So I think that if a dog man snuck up on a Sasquatch, well, I, I would have to say a dogman, but I think if they met face to face with the thinking capabilities of a Sasquatch, I, I think the dogman would have no chance. Robbie, what do you think? Randy's got good points, and those that's that's a really good analogy. I like that. I would I would definitely classify Bigfoot as as a grappler, more that that wrestling type background is. You know, but I would not strictly classify a dog man as a boxer. I would think the dog man would be more like a jujitsu or a judo judo type practice practitioner. I was thinking about a lot of Texas talking about getting on the back, uh, biting, scratching, clawing, using those uh, fulcrum points like grabbing the arm and pulling them down. I would say, and I've watched UFC back since the very first one in 1993. I've watched every, almost every every single one of them. And I back in the 
back in the very you know the very first couple of UFCs, there were hardly any rules. There were no weight classes, and it was basically to see. Well, it was the Gracies made it just to show. It was basically a big sales pitch for Gracie Jiu Jitsu. Yeah, it is what it is. But it was to show that you know their form of jujitsu could could withstand any other type of fighting, mixed martial arts or whatever, which actually mixed martial arts really wasn't a thing at that particular point, but it became a point and that's where it grew from. So I think what that, using that analogy, what that early UFC proved to us is it's not necessarily the biggest and strongest because you saw the fight with Emmanuel Yarborough, who was 600-something pounds, got beat by Keith Hackney, who was 185 pounds. Because Keith, Keith Hackney used the technique, speed, agility, uh, angles, things like that. Yes. Now, does that mean that's how that will play out? Not necessarily, because you had two very intelligent and skilled fighters in their very in their disciplines that knew what they were trying to do. So this goes back to what Tex started us off with. How intelligent is a dog man versus Bigfoot? We know how intelligent we feel Bigfoot is, and we assume that dog men are pretty intelligent. But could a dog man outthink a Bigfoot in a fight? That's the, so to me. That's that is the biggest question of whether a dog man because if if you stack everything up and Bigfoot gets a hold of dog man, it's over. But I think that's really the only, if everything is equal, brains, size, everything, I think the only thing that, that's going for Bigfoot is that grapple. I got to get a hold of him. Because if it stays on the outside and there's, you know, a, using agility and angles and things like that, I, I think the dog man runs circles around Bigfoot. But if the dog man makes a mistake – and Bigfoot gets hold of him, that's. Yeah, mm. I guess that, that, that comes back. And I, I'm glad you mentioned that um, because Hoist Gracie used to be my favorite. He was my favorite because when he fought, you could see him thinking. Mm. There was just, there was nothing going on in his face. I mean, it, 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 it was just like he was all in his head. He was like thinking, okay, this is what we're going to do here. This is what we're going to do there. But Again, I think that it comes back to how do they get into the fight? You know what I mean? I, I think it, it, it all depends on how it starts. Because I, I think that if they were coming head on, I, I you know, it, it's a toss up. It's a toss up. It's, it's like if somebody make if one of them makes a mistake, it, you know, it, it could be all ended in seconds. You know, so well, for me, no. it's a toss-up. Just think of how no. Holly Holm beat, beat Ronda Rousey. Every time anybody right. got close to Ronda Rousey, what'd she do? She dumped them on their head and put an yep. arm bar on them. Yep. Holly Holm stayed on the outside and beat her on her feet with strikes and kicks, something that Ronda Rousey couldn't couldn't deal with. For as good and as strong and as badass as Ronda Rousey was at that time, uh -huh. she was not prepared to handle somebody who could strike like Holly Holm. Right. Which, like we said, proves it does not matter how big, how strong, how fat. It, it's any given Sunday, like Tex said. Mm -hmm. If you got your, if you got a, a game plan, and there we go, there we go back to that stuff again. Right. If you got a good game plan, it just just like you know this past weekend, you know Al Jermaine uh, or Sterling, best pound for pound mm -hmm. featherweight or bantamweight, whichever one he was, in mm -hmm. the history of the division. Sugar Sean O'Malley took him out. How do you take him out? By playing to O'Malley's strengths and away from Sterling's strengths. Kept him, kept it on his feet, kept him from taking him down and beat him. Same thing. So that it it all rolls back around to how intelligent is a dog man, and is it going to fight like just some caged animal, or is it going to fight with intelligence like Bigfoot would? And here's something we we really haven't talked about. Blood loss, because the way the way we've been really talking about this fight is, um, 
that hasn't come in that hasn't come into the picture. Now, if we're talking about a dog man going in and 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 making strikes like you were talking about, Rob, um, one if he hamstrings Bigfoot, that that's going to take a lot of a lot of maneuverability out. Um, two, if he gets enough strikes in before you know Bigfoot was able to get a hold of him. We're looking at potential. We're looking at the effects of uh, the potential effects of blood loss. Yeah, and you're going to gradually get weaker and weaker and weaker because your heart is going to try to make up for that blood loss, that blood that blood pressure, which mm-hmm. is going to force it out even even more. So, and then you start. Well, what happens when you you know when the shock comes in, Robbie? You you can talk to a lot about this. Yeah, and, you know, and that's. Uh, when you get in that sim- uh, the parasympathetic reactions and right. uh, the adrenaline dump hits, and you know when that's when your heart starts shutting off uh, the your extremities. Could think of the word to make sure that your core has yep. your brain, the heart itself, and all your major. Yeah, you know, it'll. That's why when people talk about. Uh, you know, when they were in, in stressful sh- situations like stressful shootings and things like that, they talk about not being able to – the fine motor skills that you lose. You, right. It's because, you know, your body knows what's going on. It's bringing all that blood in here, and you can't – you know, simple things like picking this up and bringing it over here and taking a drink just go out the window because that's a fine motor skill. But being able to point and shoot is not a fine motor skill. To It is to an extent, but – Right, you train it muscle memory. That's the same thing. You start losing blood, your body is going to go into that shutdown mode. To, oh, okay, I've got to, I've got to keep the brain and the heart and all these vital organs. You know, I've got to keep all the blood there. I don't care what happens out here. Right, but when that and happens, it wouldn't, and, and the thing about it is, it wouldn't take but a couple of well placed bites or slashes with claws. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, we're talking about an animal. We're talking about dog, man. We're talking about an animal that we have had reports that have left slashes in oak trees that were inches deep. Mm -hmm. You know, so where does that leave us? Well, then if you, if you start, if, if the Bigfoot starts losing a good amount of blood, he starts to lose that strength advantage. Not only that, you start to get woozy. Mm-hmm. And I think that's, you know, where the dog man goes in for the kill. It, and it, is, it keeps circling back around to like what Brandy said about how they meet. Yep. What I've said mm-hmm. about who gets the first good lick in and what you've said, Tex, about who who plays this the smartest way? I think those are your three biggest. Because if you just if you back them up and start them in a corner like they do a fight, you know, like Big John, you ready? You ready? Well, let's get it on. Right. right. Yeah. That's a coin flip. But we're, but we're missing something here. We're missing something. Bigfoot could possibly pick up a log. Or anything. Somebody had brought it up in chat. They could actually use a weapon versus I've never heard of a dogman yep. with a weapon. But Bigfoot, absolutely. That's true, I mean, so but it's just like the same thing we said earlier with that. Yep. Just because we hadn't heard that doesn't mean it hadn't happened because dogman sightings are just now on the rise. So they yeah. could have been they could be using weapons. We just don't I mean right. most everybody that talks about them you know says they have more human-like hands. Now, some people I've heard say they have more paws like that, but a lot of the sightings say they have human hands. So who's to say that they couldn't use? And it turns into almost like a sword fight or club fight or whatever you want to call it. But but there again, have you ever tried to hit a dog with a stick? Yeah. It ain't easy. Hard to hit that moving target. (laughs) So, I mean... 
it, it, the thing is, we could sit here and point and counterpoint everything that that each oh, one of yeah. us says all night long, and, mm-hmm. and and we're all bringing up good points. We all got this, and the people in the chat are bringing up good points. I think those three things that we just we just talked about. I think those are the three main things. If if they back them up in the corners and Big John tells them to let's get it on, and they come out, it's a coin flip. It's you know they're going to stalk each other down. Whoever makes the first mistake is probably going to lose the fight. But if Bigfoot is sitting there drinking out of the out of the uh, stream and not paying attention, and the dog man catches him first, I don't think Bigfoot has a chance. The dog man's walk, or you know, scenting something, and he's out tracking a an elk or something like that, and Bigfoot ambushes him. It's over for the dog man. I just, I, I think it's a it's a like a sniper who fired whoever fires the first shot yeah probably I mean, gonna be the one yeah you also bring up a good point i mean you put them both in water i don't think that the dogman would survive very long um probably not that's just a scenario but yeah i could i could, I just couldn't see it because dogs like, are kind of clumsy the, in the water True. Um, I, I was just talking about if he got it, you know, Bigfoot's leaning down at, at the edge of the creek, not paying yeah, attention. Jumps on him. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But, but well, like you said, that, but that's an environment type thing. So yeah. you get, you get, put Bigfoot in an area with a bunch of trees and bushes and things like that. The advantage goes to the dog man. Right. But, and anti venom brings up a fantastic point. Well, you can beat a mad dog, and I'm not talking about a rabbit dog, just an angry freaking dog that has a one-track mind. Pit bulls are famous for this. You can beat them with a ball bat, and unless you incapacitate them, mm-hmm. it don't that's matter. True. Well, that's, that's why police true. dogs, a lot of the uh, dual-purpose dogs and uh, dogs that are trained about, that's why they're trained with an agitation stick to, to get them used to because. If they get somebody on the ground, they're biting them. They have to be they have to be used to somebody hitting them to try to get them off right. to where they're they're not going to let off until their owner outs them. All right, or handler rather. I'm sorry, not owner, but you know that you, you don't want you don't want your you're running up on this guy who possibly has a gun. You don't want your dog to have let go of him by the time you get up there, right? Where you both can get shot. You know, exactly. you don't want that dog to let go until he hear, he hears that that loose command. Mm-hmm. Um, now, Roxanne asked, "What about a werewolf fighting a Bigfoot?" And we kind of touched on this. And <laughs> if if it's true, and you're bitten by a werewolf. And you turn into a werewolf. I fast this mm-hmm. same question when I <laughs> then, and if the Bigfoot survives, then we have a were Bigfoot. So does he get hairier and he just turns into a big fluff ball with you see a couple hands sticking well, out because he's so hairy? <laughs> okay, here's do y'all remember the big heart shaped monster that was on uh Looney Tunes? <laughs> I will hug him and pet him and call him. Yeah. Um, now here, here's something. <laughs> now see, folks, this is where my mind goes. What if that's what a gugway is? You know something? That's actually not a bad. Uh, I, I was like, hmm, maybe that is interesting. That is a very interesting thought. Maybe. I mean, because what's different? The snout, you know, the ferociousness. And the teeth and the teeth and the. Yeah. Do, wow. Okay. <laughs> okay, you got me. You got me there. I, I, that, I'm, I'm, I, that's, 
<laughs> he got you too, huh? No, I just that's that's food for thought right there. That is a thought. I told you it's dangerous up here. <laughs> no, I, I like it. I, I I like that. I mean that that's a different thought. I never, you know, because we we had that whole July thing where we were discussing the differences, you know, between the dog man and the werewolf, and if there was any, we don't know because Tex, you, you and I discussed it. We always knew them as werewolves until the the right. the. The nice. name Dolphin was was that, coined. You know, well, that's he, what I called mine. When, you know, when I saw when I had my Dogman encounter, I called it a werewolf. And the description that I give, a lot of people were convinced that I saw a werewolf and not a Dogman. You know, um, which is I'm not saying it's not impossible. It's very possible. You uh-huh. know, um, mm-hmm. because what I saw had human esque hands. I'm not going to say human hands. Almost almost a raccoon like. You I've know, heard that a lot of times. I mean, yeah, I've heard they, it on your story, but I've heard it from others too that was that like a big raccoon's hands. Yeah. The, yeah. The, I don't think there is I don't think there's nimble, but if you think about it, that would give them the ability bipedally have the hands and to go down on all fours and get around very, very good. Well, think about the transformation scene in the howling. Right. Think of big, long, spindly fingers. That's exactly what that looked like. Yeah. Yeah. So, I I like where your brain goes, Tex. I, I do. Uh, that's that's <laughs> awesome. It took me by surprise. I was like, "What? What?" <laughs> I wasn't even thinking that. What's funny about this conversation? It, my uncle and I used to. He's uh, he's only like six, seven years older than me. So we, he grew up more like a big brother than he he was an actual, actual uncle. Uh, but he's as crazy over this stuff as I am. And we used to sit at my grandmother's house all the time. On, we go down there on Sunday afternoons for lunch and uh, we would sit there and just for hours and talk stuff like that. And that was the question we always asked. Well, what if, what if uh, Bigfoot and Werewolf got in a fight and the werewolf bit Bigfoot? What happens to Bigfoot? What does he turn into? I mean, those are the questions we used to ask, you know, 30, 40 years ago. Well, my question was, what if a werewolf bit a vampire or a vampire bit a werewolf? What would happen? Well, we saw, we saw what happens when a werewolf bites a vampire. Uh, Hugh Jackman bit what's his name and killed him. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. I, I was just fixing to go there. Because according, um, according to that, that part of the legend, if a werewolf... Uh, basically stands up to a vampire that's the, that was the only thing that could stop dracula if you right. follow into that part of the legend and lore but, um yeah that goes down a whole new rabbit hole but you, if you think about a gugwin and roxanne brings this up you know um Okay, it it would she made a remark about about the uh, the ears or something. And I don't know what she says. Do some to me werewolves have a snout ears like dogs on their heads? The dog may might have a smaller snout or no snout all all the ears on the side of his head. Um, I think it's just the exact opposite. Um, because mine the one I saw now this is just my personal opinion. I don't know what I saw, folks. I mean, let's just be honest. You know, I mean, I saw something. It was either a dog man or a werewolf or a skinwalker. <laughs> I mean, you, know, it was, you go, you go, you, you know, you don't know because I, it's not like he stopped. I mean, you know, he, he, he didn't even pause. He was running and turned his head and growled at me, but I didn't have a chance to shake this guy's hand and, 
you know, ask her, what are you? You know, I wish I had. <laughs> I froze. <laughs> you know, but anyway, we don't know what these things are. A lot of people claim to or believe that they know in their heart what these things are, and they might be right. I don't know. I've seen both these critters, folks. I don't know what the hell they are. Okay? Um, but the a lot of the reports we hear of a gugway, we, we hear about the snout, we hear about the teeth, we hear about even some of them having pointed ears but not standing up like what we hear about the dog man, jackal type and all that kind of stuff. They're right. more on the side of the head. They're not as pointed. They're, they look more like cropped ears, that type of thing. That sounds like a hybrid. You know? I mean, that that's... What, what if we, what if we totally left, what if we totally left the whole dog man being engineered as weapons out the door, okay? Because mm -hmm. I believe dog man has been for thousands of years. Bigfoot also. What if the genetic engineering that everybody talks about these super soldiers are the Gugway, and they're hybrids between the Bigfoot and the dog? Man? I can't argue that logic because, I mean, you saying it, it just, I was like, it makes sense. Well, it, it does, but, I mean, it is an experiment that has gone wrong because they're they're totally unpredictable. They're, they're way too aggressive and cannot be controlled. So. Well, I mean, Ian and D.A., and I love to talk about this movie because it's one of the best movies as, as far as the Bigfoot genre goes is Primal Rage. Oh, love that movie. Right, yeah. That, we, and we both agree on that, that is the closest thing in any movie that they've come to, to a, a gug way. Or what, what, yeah. what we talk about, you got tool usage, you got Savage, the the way it looked, the even, of course it doesn't completely resemble most of the things people say about it, but that, it, for all it's practical it. purposes, that's a good way in that movie. Yeah. And it what what no I uh, get out of my territory. It was oh you come into my territory, you're dead. It's, it's, yeah. it, it just kept on, kept on, kept on until either they were dead or it was dead. Yep. And to your to your point, Tex, that would be kind of the programming of something like this. It wouldn't it wouldn't stop. It wouldn't give up. It's, it's just like all uh, the the old Corey Hay movie, Watchers, the Oxcom, you know, whatever the dog touched, this thing killed, and it didn't have no off button. It didn't have no stop. It it, just, it was just going to keep going. So, yeah. I mean, it, it's... It, now to come think about it, that thing looked like a short gugway. Yeah. A very short gugway, but still... <laughs> Well, maybe, maybe they're, well, and when you're, honestly, when you're using practical effects, that limits the height, you sure. know? Well, at least back um, then, did. I mean, they use practical effects in dog soldiers because the, that technology had, with walking the bill or the stilts that they were on. They didn't have that back then with in what I guess watchers came out in the mid eighties and dog soldiers come out in what early two thousands. So the technology for that, but but to your point, yeah, back then they didn't have the you couldn't really make them but so high. You know. Now I think if you put if you put a Gugway in the mix, 
versus either one of these dogmen or a straight Bigfoot? I think you have. I if I if I was to bet on that fight, I would bet on the good way. Well, I mean, the name translates think, into face eater. Like, yeah, <laughs> the name says yeah. it all. Yeah, the, the face eater. I mean, that's that's the ultimate predator. I. But I there don't again, think there's much out there that would stand a chance. But there again. <laughs> That right there says that they've been around for at least hundreds of years. So, and I saw somebody in the text in the chat while ago, they said, well, maybe it wasn't, they were engineered, but not by the government. So now we've entered the whole UFO alien territory, you know, or, you know, something of supernatural nature. So, oh, just an accident. And that's not out of the realm of possibility if okay. If both of these creatures, a dogman and a Bigfoot, are able to breed with humans, why wouldn't they be able to breed with each other? Well, I mean in you know, DA brought that at one of the Apex Predator books. Um, I can't remember which one it was, but there was a group of uh, dog dogmen, the Ulonga Doglala, that were kidnapping women in, in his park and taking them in there because that's what they, they were thinking. That's how they could, uh, the best of both worlds, get back to being able to change back and being able to keep that. So, Obviously, it was in their minds in this. Well, I mean, that's... That's a, that's a thought that's going around amongst other people is what I mean. Well, I put that out there. Oh, good grief. Um, when did that video... When did I make that video? Good God of my... Um, You know what? I'm going to let me let me look, see when that video came out, because I talked about that very thing in my dogman origin theory. And where we'll say we're going full Alice in Wonderland now. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> yeah I th I, Roxanne, I think you're right, though. I think I think it was Wolf. It's one of the apex predators, but I think it might be Wolf Moon. It's the one where they were out in the. Uh, the desert tracking them. Well, okay, so here's my thought. If we're, if we're going straight flesh and blood, the anatomies are completely different on, on both sides. So it would be physically impossible to mate with each other. So we would have to go on the werewolf side of things, and then it would have to be the bite. Okay. Um, let me bring this up real quick because I feel like tooting my own horn. <laughs> this is a this is my dogman origin theory, and. I was wondering, I couldn't remember how long ago it was. I brought this up 40, four, I almost said 40 years ago, four years ago. Um, of That's how, you know, the Great Flood almost took them to extinction and they had to interbreed with not only humans, but also canines. And that's where we get all the different breeds, all the different looks, all the different behaviors and everything. And that's also why we do, they seem to have dumbed down um, since um, they were, you know, almost godlike creatures at one point. 
super intelligent. There were armies of them walking around, that type of thing is what we hear. Mm-hmm. So, um, you're talking about I think that's a very like the sign of cephali, the dog headed, yeah, dog headed people that basically, and you think about the wolf's head nar, the wolf headed soldiers, and back. I mean, th- these things, things like this go back thousands and thousands of years, right? And you know, this is just like my point with Inca stones, you didn't get stuff like this unless people saw it. Because four thousand years ago, there wasn't there wasn't Google where somebody could get on and say, "What does a T Rex look like?" Oh, let me go yeah. chisel this out on a on a rock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You didn't know what a T Rex is? A T Rex is text bit by a dinosaur. <laughs> That's a T Rex. <laughs> That's a text delicious. Um, <laughs> speaking of rabbit holes, we're going down. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't help myself. <laughs> yeah. uh, Dallas Baker, I have not, I don't remember seeing you in here before. Um, what about these oversized Sasquatches, Bigfoots that eat everything, and they're like eighteen to fifteen to, feet tall? I think that's where you get into the mountain giant thing. Yeah. Um, I don't see Duke in here, but that that's his that's his that's his wheelhouse. Yeah. 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 But that's interesting too though. Something I've got to look into. Um But I, I think once again <laughs> we've muddied the waters even more. <laughs> But that's what we do. I mean, you know, we we start talking about these things and we start coming up with these other questions and other theories and other thoughts. And, you know, it it really, and if if you've had an encounter, folks, it takes you, it makes you step back and go, okay, now what's, what in the hell did I run into? You know? I think it's physically impossible to have the discussions about these things without, you it, it it's you can't discuss what we said we were going to discuss now without getting off on all these different variants. No, you can't. It, it's no, just physically can't. impossible. Well, there's too many unknowns to you know. Oh it, yeah. it, Just to stay on track, there's just too many too many unknown things that make it virtually impossible. Uh, uh, and 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 Jason's not here. So I'll I'll add this in loving memory. Um, no, Jason's fine, folks. Don't panic. Um, <laughs> um, well, I say fine. He's still a month of living. Um, the whole Superman and big uh, Superman and Bigfoot. The whole Superman and and uh, Batman fight. Okay. Mm-hmm. I've never understood people siding with Batman. Never have. Never have. Um, you know, the, there was a movie about it, and they come up with this convoluted situation where, you know, it introduces the kryptonite and kryptonite dust or something. I don't know, some crazy thing. And I'm like, Okay, but it still doesn't make any sense to me because Superman could literally just peach Batman's head off. <laughs> <You know? laughs> right, right, yeah, yeah. But there, there's, there's no fight. There's no fight there. None. I agree. I agree. But you're, you're gonna, you're gonna have people. The side with the Batman thing. Well, you know, if, if Superman, if Superman can fly around the world counterclockwise so fast that it can turn back time, doesn't matter because if he makes a mistake, he'll just start flying and turn back time and then do it right the next time. It won't matter. <laughs> it just <Yeah>. won't matter. <laughs> 
But I don't think I, I think we're right back to where we started as far as okay, if we take the physical Bigfoot, the physical dog man, I think it's a coin toss. Who gets the advantage first? And that's who wins the fight. Now, here's a question. I, I, I think for you. that's what it comes down to. And I'm gonna put you both in the I'm gonna put you both in a box here behind the eight ball over the barrel. We're laying bets. Who are you gonna bet on? Okay, now here's the situation. Bigfoot walks into this clearing, dog man walks into this clearing, they start to circle each other. That's the start of the fight. Who are you betting on? And this is Brandy, strict, Lady Spurt. Strict flesh and blood, though, Bobby, right? Bobby Hush. <laughs> strict flesh and blood. Ladies first. I damn it. If they met face to face, I would put my money on Bigfoot. Absolutely. Hands okay. Down. All right. Robbie, what about you, my friend? I'm gonna go with dog man. The old werewolf, my whole standby. Trying <laughs> through. We need we need somebody to really do that in like CGI and break it down and all of that so we could actually see, you know, because we'll never know until that happens. I bet you Someone's Ryan gonna- and Shane and a cut we get Ryan and Shane and a couple others together. They could probably do something like that. Yeah, absolutely. I think we, we need to see that. Show, I, it, what it was was it? Deadliest Warrior and their Thank animal you. face-off. Both, but yeah. It's basically a combination of both of those shows, Animal Face-Off and Deadliest Warrior. Yeah. You just get one of them programs that, that runs statistics and scenarios and all that kind of stuff, and it, it you put all these variables in, and then it simulates like a thousand yeah. confrontations, and then it – it gives you the winner based on who won the most and how they want it. It's, I'm sure that something like that could be done. Yeah. Yeah. We need Not somebody to do that. Then we could do it with a whole bunch of cryptids. <laughs> we could do it with all kinds of cryptids. It just wouldn't stop there. Now, growing old with purpose um, has a good question. Who has the fastest red reflexes? That's the telling point, in my opinion. I think that's a very big part of it. But like I said, uh, like I said earlier, I think you have to give, give the speed and agility to the dog man. The brute yes. strength goes to the Bigfoot. That being the case, if the dog man gets in, gets a couple of good slashes, gets a couple of good bites, the fight goes on. If he can keep, if he, if, the dog man can keep the big foot off of him and keep him bleeding. He's going to lose the strength advantage. Uh-huh. He's going to start losing the mental advantage because he's more of a thinking animal, according to what we have discussed. Um, and I think dog man uh-huh. wins. Yeah. Bye. And I, the thing is, I just I think if they see each other, and it's not a surprise on either either side. Even if the dog man is not as smart as Bigfoot, he's going to know I need to stay away as far as and keep right. this. And Bigfoot's going to know that only the only way that it can win this is, or because it don't it it knows it can't stay on the outside because, so it's going to have to close the distance. Dogman has the advantage on speed and agility. It stays on the outside, uses its angles, just like the modern mixed martial artist versus the older grappler. To, oh, I've just got to go in and grab a hold of Hulk smash type thing. That's my reason. That's how I see the dogman coming out on top. Yeah. Yeah, I just don't – I just don't – I just don't bet on Dogman being that much faster. I mean, I, I get it. I know they're going to be faster to a point because of the way they're built. They're a, they're a slimmer build, blah, blah, blah. But I don't think Bigfoot 
is slow by any means. No, I, it's I, not. I, I think they have some speed, and and we're underestimating the speed. No, but you're talking well, about like you're talking about like Christian Wilkins versus trying to race Tyreek Hill. Yeah. Okay. I mean so, Christian Christian Wilkins is going to outrun ninety percent of us non uh, pro football players. With, uh, it, you know whether they're my size or smaller, mm -hmm. but there's not many people going to out, outrun Tyreek Hill because he's well, built that's, for speed. That's, that's just saying, though. I think we may be underestimating the speed. I mean, because it, right there is what you is basically what you just said. You know, you're you're stating that the the dogman is leaps and bounds faster. I don't think it's leaps and bounds. I, I honestly think they're much closer in speed than what you think. Just because they're big doesn't mean they're slow. Right. I, I agree know, with that. I, but, ju I, just, I, but I don't think so. We can go back to what Tech said earlier about if we put a gorilla in a, versus a wolf in a fight, we might see how this goes. Well, let's put a, a gorilla and a wolf in a race. And who's going to who's gonna be faster in a race between a, a gorilla and a wolf? Yeah, but you're now, talking about a gorilla that that you know most of its its time is spent on 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 fours, where Bigfoot most of this time spent on you know the two legs. So I I, I don't uh, think <laughs> I, I I don't know I don't think that they they spend as much time on all fours as they do standing up. I think they mm. have. A more more humanoid tendencies than we think they do. Yeah, but I think they're I think they're um I think they're knuckle draggers. Okay. And I think they are just as comfortable on down all fours as they are bipedally. Um mm -hmm. that being said, you, you were talking about the the speed factor being leaps and bounds. No, I don't think it's leaps and bounds. But the thing about it uh -huh. is, it doesn't have to be some bounds. Uh -uh. And, and, and if the dog man is smart enough, now you got to remember, we're talking about intelligence level here. But I do think, and I, I would, like I said, I do think you give the thinking um, advantage to Bigfoot. But I think the dog man is going to know that he has to move and strike, move and strike, move and strike. Yeah. Okay. I do think he's yeah. been around long enough to where he, he knows he's going to have to hamstring this Bigfoot to have a chance. Okay? Right. And if he hamstrings that Bigfoot, he takes away the mobility. Yeah. Okay. And, and think of it. Don't think of this. Maybe, maybe I used the wrong, you know, I'm, I used real world examples, but listen, mm -hmm. since we talked, we were talking about superheroes and all this kind of stuff. Think about the justice league when flash took off, when Superman was holding on to, to everybody and Flash uh -huh. took off running and Superman uh -huh. was fast enough to turn and look at him and catch him, but he wasn't fast enough to hit him. Flash was fast enough to get out of the way. Superman was fast enough to where he could actually now name me one other of, of the people that was out there in that movie that would have been flat, fast enough to even see the Flash, much less take a swing at him. None of them. Right. Superman was fast enough to do that, but he wasn't fast enough to hit him. The only reason Flash hit the ground is because he tried to push Superman, and Superman was just too strong. He didn't play his. He didn't play to his strengths, like I think a dog man would do. It would be like I don't want to get as close to this right thing that's way stronger than I am. I'm going to use my advantage, and that that's my point with that is just Christian Wilkins is fast, but he's not Tyreek Hill fast. Bigfoot is fast. But he's not, and there's a difference between being fast and being quick and sudden. Exactly, that's what uh -huh. I was just fixing to say. Uh -huh. I, I mean, that's you just, know, but like I said, it, it's a coin toss. Coin, yeah. a coin toss. There we go. I got it. It's I'll spin toss. it out. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't know. Well, I mean, going back to the, uh, going back to the, to the mixed martial arts thing. Think about one of the most famous uh, things about Vitor Belfort. They they love to throw, show that graphic up when Vitor, Vitor was fighting, and he just started throwing up. I mean, there was hardly anybody during that time that could throw hands as fast as Vitor Belfort. That's why they called him the Phenom. 
Mm-hmm. And there were plenty of guys who who could throw a fast punch, but throwing one fast punch versus throwing twenty or thirty punches at the same that same velocity that's that's there's that's on a whole nother level. Well, I will say this: I saw one of the funniest spots I ever saw. Um, was a between a guy that was six foot three and a guy that was five four. And the guy that was 5'4 whooped this boy's ass. He ducked in on the inside and walked circles around him and chopped him down. Okay. And the big guy couldn't touch him. You know? Um. Just saying, you know. Um, but. It goes right back to what we were talking about. I think any bet we're going to place is going to be a 50-50. Yeah. Yep. That, that, I don't, think you, could, I don't think you could give I, odds to either one, really. No, I don't think so either. I mean, honestly, it, it would be it, it'd be a toss-up because you just, in any fight, you just don't know what's going to happen. You know, and I, I'm sure that they've they've come across each other um you know while in the woods and, and roaming and I, I i honestly think they probably give each other a wide berth and just pass i think they, they, I think they, they know the same thing that it, it, it's it's not a winning situation either way no you it's know? not because well, they're it, both it, going is... to, they're both going to lose it's just how bad and if you look in in nature as it is right now what are two of the top predators in the oceans? Great whites and killer whales. Yep. What usually happens when, when this, those two come together? Yeah, uh, the killer whale like, flips, the, flips the shark upside down, puts him to sleep. And pretty much takes eats his liver. And yep. that's, yeah. You know, so you see that on this side, but then in, let's say, Asia where uh, tigers and bears share the same habitat you don't generally see them to mess with each other in, right. even though you see these two top predators because those are the two top predators in the in that area but they do exactly mm-hmm. what you just said brandy they give each other a wide berth because yeah if a tiger gets hurt even if he gets away from that fight then he's not gonna eat because he didn't have a he didn't have a pride like lions do to, to hunt for it same thing with most of these bears. If they get hurt, even if they get away from the fight, they're pretty much dead anyway if they can't heal because they don't have they can't right. so they predators can't. like that that are lone predators that are solitary, they're not gonna take a chance on something that they don't know for a fact that they can take down. Right. Well, and, and going back to the whole killer whale great white thing, you're talking about a pod of killer whales versus a lone great white shark mm-hmm. yeah you know Absolutely. and killer whales being a whole lot smarter than the shark and right. they are way smart enough to distract the shark while the other one losing is the whole time that's the advantage right there mm-hmm. which so, is why i brought that up because you got exactly but well, yeah, you, it, usually it, in nature when you have two yeah. Lone predators, they're they're not gonna. I mean, it, I'm I'm sure it happens every once in a while on rare occasions. Or, you know, but for the most part, they're both. It's a risk reward thing. What am I gonna get as a reward for this big risk that I'm taking over? If it's not worth it, they're not gonna do it. It's they're not like us where we're like oh, I'm gonna bet everything I got on on this. You know. It, it just doesn't work that way for animals. And I th- I think that, truthfully, it would be what we're talking about. If they, if they come up on each other, unless there was just some some factor that was pushing them to where they, they didn't have any way to escape, I think they give each other a wide berth. Nine two. Time. Um, I love what Mary Catherine sh- uh, says here. <laughs> I understand what you're doing, but I hope everyone realizes fact from fiction. I say that Hulk will whoop them both. <laughs> I have to agree with that statement. 
<laughs> um, and we do realize what we're doing. This is a this, this is just a fun show, but it's a debate that's been going on for years right. in this right. community. And it's something that we haven't really. In fact, I don't know. I, I can't remember any anybody sitting down and doing this much of a breakdown and spending a whole show talking about it. This came up and the, they'll talk about it for a little bit. I've been involved in shows. Hell, me and D. Doss talked about it years mm -hmm. ago, but we never broke it down like this. And um, it is 100% speculation. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you've encountered these things or not. It's still, you know, speculation because we've never, mo well, I can't say none of us, but nobody I've ever talked to personally has ever th seen these creatures engage with each other under these circumstances. I've heard, I've heard third or fourth hand reports of a fight. But that's it. So, you know, this is more of a fun thing. Yeah. You know. Um, so <laughs> it's always fun. To, it's always fun to think about what would happen. But right. in, all, in all honesty, I I don't think that they're going to risk. No. Any. I think it's few and far between the circumstances where it comes down to a fight. And when it does come down to a fight, it's most of the time they bluff their way out of it. And because it's like you said, Robbie, in nature, two apex predators generally will not fight. Or if they do, it is very short because they don't want to take the risk on being energy, not only injured, injured, but also because a minor injury out in the wild can be death. Yep. Okay. Well, even look at the um, animals that fight for uh, dominance of the same species for for rights to mate. You know, right. most, those are not even to, you know, hippos sometimes get a little, you know, a little squirrely yeah. and will go yeah. that far. But even even crocodiles and alligators. Oh, yeah. Will, will not carry it so far most times i mean sometimes you'll it, but a lot of times you see that you see it in alligator farms and places like that where they're all right. packed in and you'll see one with you know with a broke arm or no arm or something like that but right in the wild you know i watch all kinds of nature doc documentaries you very rarely see two bull crocodiles going at each other to the death you know it's right. established dominance okay this this one won the other one Swims off to find something else. Yep. Right. Yep. Nine times out of ten, it's it's you know, like I said, it's a bluff. Yeah. And that's, I said, that's I said as far as it goes. Yeah. I said Every once in a while, it'll it come to blows, but it's very short lived. Yeah, I I think they just give each other a really wide berth, and and they they try not to even engage because it could be you know fatal. Yeah. So, because that's what it's, it, it would come down to what we're talking about. It would come down to one razor thin mistake, right? Mm -hmm. Whoever made that, whoever made the first mistake, is probably going to lose. And regardless of whether they end up losing the fight by dying or or, or just getting hurt, and let, that's usually like Tech said in nature. That's usually a death sentence anyway. Because if you can't right. hunt, there's nobody coming to feed you. Yeah, yep. well, I mean, uh, considering that whoever Let's won the fight, line. yeah, whoever won the fight's not going to come out unscathed anyway. So no. it, 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 it's a, it's not worth the fight, and and they know that. So, I mean, of course, it's going to happen. You know, I mean, territory is territory, and they've got to protect things. So um, it's going to happen, but I don't think it happens very often. Well, I mean, and okay, let's look at it this way. There's a reason, um, as far as black bears go, if if one challenges you, you want to be appear to be as big and loud and you know voracious as you possibly can, because you a lot of times you can bluff 
and back down a black bear. A grizzly, not so much. But right, you know, a black bear, you know, given the opportunity, is going to walk away from the fight if he thinks he's matched or close to it. Right. So. Yeah, because that's with a lot of animals. They're not. They're not going to pick a fight or fight something that they know they can't win. If there's right. no chance. Yeah, not unless they're backed into a corner, and that and that brings up right. a whole new bo- that that's a whole new can of worms right there. You got something fighting, that's you know. Show. Yeah, <laughs> because they're not fighting to win the fight; they're fighting to get the hell out. That's right. what they're doing. You corner something, he wants he want he's not trying to he's not trying to kill you. He's trying to get the hell out of dodge. Right. You know? Right. Absolutely. And this guy and I cornered a bobcat one time. Yeah, it's not a pretty sight. I was gonna say, why? <laughs> why? <laughs> we were we okay, it was by mistake. We me and a buddy of mine were walking in a creek and the creek had sheer sides on it. Okay. And we come around this corner and it came to a waterfall. Okay. Now all three sides were about 15 feet high. Okay. We walked around the corner of the bend and this bobcat was drinking out of the pool below the waterfall. He had nowhere to go except through us. And that's where he was coming. I mean, unfortunately we had to kill him, but because it's you're not just gonna, you know, spread out and back off, and he's gonna walk in between you. That ain't gonna happen. You know, he's gonna go for right. one of you um, right. because he feels threatened. Unfortunately, we had to kill him. You know, and I hated it, but that's you know that's how it was. So did yeah. you see? Did you see what Auntie Venom said? Let's do Gug Boy no. and Soap Science next. <laughs> That'd be a heck of a matchup. Woo! Yeah, no. Yeah, I just. I think, you know, once you get the packs or family groups involved, you, you, yeah. that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about one on one, nobody else involved, you know. A head to head matchup. And, right. And I think it. I think we come to determine it's a toss up. Going toss. Any given Sunday, whoever has the better day. You know? Yep. Because if the dog man went to lunge in and the Bigfoot got a hold of him, that's church. <laughs> you know, I mean <laughs> Right. <laughs> right. Because I can honestly see a Bigfoot snatching up a dog man and and, and pulling a Hulk on him and slamming him into the ground several times. You know I mean? How many right. reports do or we hear? Uh, or, you know, yeah. either, either people witnessing a Bigfoot slamming a hog in, into, into a, a, a tree or, you know, snapping it like a twig. And a pig, I don't even want to get into that, but a pig is no easy chore to kill. Okay. So, and they they ain't got no quit in them. <laughs> Once you piss them <laughs> off, they ain't got no quit. But you're also talking about it uh, as far as Bigfoot goes, and, and Dog Man, I'm sure too. That I think pretty regularly takes out wild pigs. So, where does that lead you? You know, right. you're talking about two right. tough critters here. But I think it's been a hell of a conversation. I've enjoyed it. Oh, I oh Robbie, Donnie Cho wants to have you on his show and talk about MMA. I love love me some mixed martial arts. I personally think you ought to get Brandy and Robbie on the show and talk MMA. <laughs> we can do it, Brandy. Me it. <laughs> you go, Robbie. <laughs> I'd love to. I love talking MMA. Well, see, there you. I don't keep up with it enough. Um, I started watching it back in the day, and then they ruined it. <laughs> uh, you know, and I thought that too. I, th- I think they, I, yeah, 
it's like because you know Robbie was talking about the ultimate fighting challenge and and how there was there wasn't yeah. really any I the rules were what no fish hooking no fish hooking no small joint manipulation no eye gouging and I think that, that was, was it. it. There that, was, they didn't it. even have a stipulation about hitting below the belt. There right. was no stipulation about the downward elbow strikes. There was uh, no stipulations about it punch, was... hitting, punching, hitting, or kicking a downed opponent. I mean, hey, I saw but, a Russian guy. I saw, and I can't remember his name. He was a blonde Russian guy that spoke broken English or a Polish guy, maybe. But, um, he was fighting a guy, and the guy ran his face along the fence, and he ended up beating the guy. <laughs> the Russian came back and ended up beating the guy. Yeah, see, yeah, he I mean, that happened to Oleg Tuktarov. Huh? Oleg Tuktarov is jumping towards the first when they first. Oh yeah, when it was early days. Yeah, that was probably Oleg Tuktarov because I remember something about his face on the cage, and 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 then he it like pissed him off or something. He came back and. Yep. I'm pretty sure that's who that or that's because he ended up actually winning the third or fourth one. I can't remember which one it was. But uh yeah, he was he was one of the early pioneers of it. But you know they had to, they had to get the rules because to get the Nevada State Athletic Commission to you know grant right. them their status and all that stuff so they could come out from under the underground because the first what twenty something were all underground fights. Yep. So when Zufa, when the uh, Fertitta brothers and Dana or and the Fertitta brothers bought it and then hired Dana White as the president because they wanted to make it legit, you know that's when they went to the Nevada State Athletic Commission and said, "Hey, you know we want to sanction this. Okay, yep. well you got to clean it up. You got to do this. You got to do weight classes. You got to do you know all these rules, regulations, and all that stuff." So, well, that's but, it. Yeah, Robbie, I, I appreciate you coming on, brother. It's it's been Thanks a long time me. coming, and I uh, it. It, it's uh, I can't wait to see you, man. We're gonna have a good time. We're gonna have a good time. Count it down. After today, I've got four shifts left, and then I'm off until after we get back from Texas. Oh, I had to. Now. I had to work overtime <laughs> last night. I had to work overtime last night. I'm off tonight, and then I got to work overtime uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then yeah, then I'm off. So, yeah, is that right? Yeah, something like that. Shout out on um, tomorrow, off Wednesday and Thursday, and work Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and then I'm done until after the conference is over. Awesome. Well, folks. Appreciate you putting up with us tonight. It's been an interesting conversation. It's been entertaining, if nothing else. So yeah. put that in your head and smoke it. <laughs> <laughs> or pipe, smoke it, whatever the hell. But um, I hope I hope everybody's going to come to the um, – uh, everybody that can, I, I can't wait to see y'all, whoever's coming to the Dogman Conference. You know, like I said, we're all going to be there. Um, and it's going to be a good time good time had by all so mm -hmm. yeah a lot, lot of interesting folks going to speak the lineup is uh, is is great and uh it, it's uh the, you know i've talked to so many people that oh i'm gonna come i'm gonna man i hope y'all show up because right. i can't wait we're gonna have a good time yeah it's gonna be yeah. good 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 time um, well, I think we'll, uh, sign off for the night. Thank y'all again. Brandy can get some sleep and yeah. I'm going to chew on Rob's ear, Robbie's ear after we get off air. So we'll talk to y'all later. Y'all have a great night. Bye everybody. As soon as I find the button, we'll get the hell out of Dodge. <laughs> there it is. <laughs>